be in the world, but not of the world. We've all heard it, but living it out can be quite the challenge. Thankfully, in the sometimes dark world of social media, there are a few influencers showing us the way, and Maddie Pruitt-Trout is one of those amazing people, <laughs> and she's joining me live in the studio along with some friends of mine. We got Sky, Josh, and Michaela. You guys, thank you so much for being with us today about this conversation on how we can truly live mm -hmm. counterculturally and how today is gonna go, just to let everyone at home know as well. Um, I'm gonna ask a question, but then you guys are really gonna take it away and ask some things that are on your heart for Maddie. So, you guys ready? Let's we'll okay. go. Yes. yes, Maddie, thank you again so much for being here with us. Um, okay, first, obviously, elephant in the room, not really. You were on The Bachelor. You were on bit. The Bachelor. <laughs> I was, tell I was. Us, tell us about that time, because I have also heard that you really felt like God was calling you to this. Yeah. So I had some friends apply me for the show that I did not know about. They did not tell me beforehand. So I found out months later, got the call, thought it was a prank call. At first I laughed, thought they called the wrong Madison. And then they started spitting facts about myself. And I was oh like, no, God. the right Madison, that is me. And I honestly did not take it seriously. I called my mom and I was like, you'll never believe like who just called me, so funny. And I was like, I'd never do it. And she just responded in a way that I did not expect, but I'm really grateful for now. And she just said, hey, Maddie, let's, let's pray first. Like our first mm -hmm. response to everything is to pray first before yeah. we just shut it down and say, no, let's take it before God. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Did you, did you hear who, like, who, who called me? <laughs> and uh, and she, she just was like, let's just pray about it. And so we did. And it was not a rash decision. It actually was months mm -hmm. of praying about it and really taking it before the Lord and asking God to lead me in that. And I cannot explain, it would take an hour for me to tell you guys everything that happened during that time period. But God just so spoke to me through signs, wonders, people, dreams. I mean, even just like to my heart as I would read his word, it just, mm. it was so clear that that was the direction I was supposed to go. And it made no sense to me. I mean, I had graduated Bible college. I had been working at the church. Mm. I mean, it was so, when I tell you the opposite of what I imagined for my wow. life, the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted, after graduating Bible college, I wanted to do ministry and going on The Bachelor seemed like the complete opposite way to wow. do that. <laughs> wow. But God used it and Absolutely. I'm really, really grateful for it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it was ministry in many ways. It was. <laughs> like, were you ministering to the people on the show? Yeah, yeah, it was really, it was a really awesome opportunity to be able to encourage, you know, the producers and the girls and even, you know, The Bachelor himself and just mm. like the people around me and just reminding them of, you know, hey, your worth is not in this rose. Like mm, whether you get this so rose good. or not, this yeah. does not determine your value and your worth. And just getting to remind them as I'm also reminding myself and encouraging myself, of course, you know, that, that our value and our worth isn't something that can't be given or taken away mm -hmm. by anybody else. And, um, and just reminding them, you know, where, where our true worth and value comes from and, and that if we don't get a date or we don't get a rose, you yeah. know, that that's maybe just like God closing a door to lead us to something better. And so it was really, it was really cool. A lot of good conversations, wow. you know, that, that happened. Some girls asked me to lead some Bible studies. I got to pray over Let's some of the go. girls and have kept in touch with them since. So oh, I, I love them. They were all at my wedding and, you know, we still keep in touch and have that's fun. so cool. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing. Okay, Sky, you got the first question, girl. <laughs> Go ahead. You kind of stole my question. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You like led right into yeah. it. But Sorry. that's okay because I actually, because you talked, you talked so much now about like how that affected, like being a person of faith on The Bachelor and how it affected your relationship in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I was wondering maybe how it had like a negative, like if it affected you negatively yeah. or if there were people, like you had so many positive experiences, but like yeah. maybe what were some of those oh. negative experiences? I'm like, there's a lot, <laughs> I know. you know? I, I mean, it's, it's a hard situation to be in. It's intense, you know, pressures, temptations, emotional highs, lows, mm -hmm. um, a lot of navigating even, yeah, Maddie, who are you? What do you believe, right, you yeah. know? And those things being tested, my identity being tested, my faith being tested, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and what I was looking for in a spouse. What, what do I believe, you know, I deserve or should be looking for? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those were questions I had to continually ask myself and I didn't have, you know, my, my friends or my family around. I didn't have my church. I didn't have worship music. I didn't have any of these yeah. things that I've had my whole life wow. that has 
attributed to my faith, you know? It was truly me and the Lord. Mm. And, you know, the only alone time I got was if I would, like, lock myself into a bathroom and just, like, pray. And I did that many times in, in multiple moments of just, like, hitting my knees, you know, right next to the toilet and just being like, <laughs> Lord, I need you. And, uh, and it was seriously, like, a whole nother level of dependence on wow. the Lord that I had never experienced, like, mm. up until that point in my life. And um, super grateful for what it taught me during that time. And then even coming off the show, when the show started airing, of course, there's, you know, a lot of people who respect the stance that I took with my faith and purity. But at the same time, there's going to be a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was criticism from the world. There was criticism from the church. There was every which way, wow. um, you know, receiving hate and, and judgment. And so that for sure was really hard. You know, there was a period where I lost like 20 pounds and wow. was unable to sleep, having a hard time eating and really like, Lord, I know you led me here, but like, why, why am I getting this? Why does it feel this way? And like, mm -hmm. where are you? Right. And so I definitely had some of those moments and just would have to turn back to my word. And just, you see all throughout scripture, mm -hmm. you see Elijah, you see Moses, you see David, you see so many different people throughout scripture. And you're like, okay, why would I think that my faith journey would look drastically different. Like everyone that God used had to go through, you know, persecution, suffering, mm -hmm. waiting seasons, whatever it may be. And so why should that look any different for us, you know? Wow. Um, and so in, in those moments, it was just clinging to like God's truth and, and having people around me to be like, hey, will you tell me who I am right now? Like, mm -hmm. I really, I'm not believing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't feel it. So like, will you pray for me? Will you remind me of who I am? So community was really important. Wow. and all of that too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Cool. yeah, that's good. Josh? Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that you're like, you're like yeah. you got yeah. it, Josh. I know. Um, my question is a little cliche, right? So apparently, I think we've all heard the saying that love is blind. Mm. Um, personally, I've never really understood that. Yeah. So if you can actually explain to me what that means Absolutely. and then how to avoid it. Yeah. Mm. So I actually yeah. have a chapter titled in my book, Love is Blind. Mm. And the subtitle is Red Flag Alert. So... I mean, one of the things that I, I talk about in that chapter is just like, it's really easy when you're so, you know, filled with emotion or you're, you know, you're in love or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and, and your, your emotions are clouding your judgment and you're led by feelings, you're led by pressures, you're led mm -hmm. by wants rather than being led by values, rather than being led by convictions. And so that's kind of what I interpret like love is blind is when we make, you know, our decisions based off of fleeting feelings mm. and instead of basing our decisions off of the word of God and off of our convictions. Wow. And yeah. so yeah. for me, I wanted to be a person and I, I pray that anyone who reads this book, you know, that they would be able this to. This one. This one right here, y'all. <laughs> nice this segue. one. This one right here. Segue here we go. Okay. Yes. So good. Love you for that. <laughs> no, I, I pray that, you know, that what would be said about us as Christians, as believers, is that we make our decisions from a place of of standing firm in our values and in God's word and standing firm in that truth um, and not just mm. being so led by our emotions because our emotions are valid, but they're not always right and they don't make the best leaders because, you yeah. know, sometimes they That's tell you good. one thing and then the next day they tell you something else, you yeah. know? Sometimes yeah. I wake up yeah. and I'm like, man, I am so cool. And sometimes <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, I'm the worst. No one loves me. I'm not enough. I'll never mm. be enough. And it's important for me not to just be so led by those yeah. because then that's going to lead me down a really dark path of resentment, shame, regret, and who knows what else. And so it's really important for us to make decisions based off of values and convictions. Um, but I talk about a lot of different red flags in that chapter, you know, just some things to look out for and not be blind to, like to have an awareness um, you know, the Bible talks about without vision, the people perish. It's like, we got to be believers. We got to be people who have vision. We know what we're running to. We know what our aim is, our mission is. And we have our eyes set on that. And we're not just walking around like blind, like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Who, who am I looking for? Um, the only way we can find the love we're looking for is if we know what that love is and we know how to get to it. And so you know, having that awareness and being aware of some of the things. Because I've been in relationships where I was tolerating, ignoring red flags, yeah. and um, mm. it never led to peace, and it never led to God's best. Um, it only led to confusion and chaos and so much more. Yeah. So I want to keep people from having to go down that path if I can. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. That's, good. that's good. That's good. Michaela, yeah. yes, girl, what's your question? <laughs> so kind of going then off of what you're saying about not being led by emotions or, you know, wanting to live the way that 
we're called to through the word and things like that is what would you say to somebody who is trying to live a pure life or Mm. returning back to purity? What kind of boundaries would you offer or advice would you offer them? First of all, knowing your why, like why, why are you choosing purity? For me, it was so important for me to know I'm not choosing purity because people are telling me to or because it's the right thing to do. I'm choosing purity because God's word literally says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Purity mm-hmm. leads me to be at a place where I can see God clearly. I, I can know him on an, in an intimate way. And I want God's best for my life. And I want to see God. And I want God in my, in my relationships and in my, you know, in my decisions and in all the things. And so for me, I've been able to see purity gives way more than maybe what the world would say it takes away. You know, it, I think mm-hmm. a lot of people was like, oh, period, pursuing purity is like, oh, I'm going to be missing out. I'm not going to be able to have fun or oh, like you guys, you know, who pursue purity, y'all are living so contained. Like you don't, you're not experiencing freedom. And I actually would be like, no, actually pursuing purity is what leads to freedom. And having purity in my life has been such a gift. It's led to so much peace and protection and just God's very best. And in the past, when like I had my moments of not pursuing purity, it led to shame. It led to confusion. It led to me lacking confidence in who I was in Christ and then trying to place that in someone else or in other things. And so pursuing purity has been able to give me that confidence of like, I know who I am in Christ. And that has been my why. And so in moments where it's been hard, I go back to that why. And I think with that, making a decision outside of the heat of the moment, I think a lot of times we let our feelings lead us. And then we end up being like, Mm. how did I get here? And Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, what if we actually dialed back and we zoomed out and we said, hey, okay, I know in this life, I'm going to be faced with pressures and temptations. So what am I going to do when this pressure or this temptation comes? How am I going to respond? And making those decisions outside of the heat, the temptation, the pressure of a moment is actually what's going to give us that ability to when those moments come, you're like, no, I've already made the decision. I already know I'm not going to do that, actually. Mm -hmm. And here's my why. And that's mm-hmm. so, so important. And then just to take it a step further, just bring accountability in, right. like bring yeah, people yeah. into that decision. For me, I had to tell people, hey, I'm making this decision to save myself for marriage. And I know it's going to be really hard. Right. Like there's going to be so many moments where I'm going to want to be like, nah, never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's fine. We'll just, you know, it's cool. God, we're yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I knew there were going to be those moments. And I, I just, I was like, no, but at the end of the day, God, right now, my body is not mine. It's yours. Yeah, and I am one with yeah, you and true. body, soul, and spirit. I am yours. And yeah. then one day, if it be your will, I'm going to be made one with someone else. And I want to give him all of me, body, Mm -hmm. soul, and spirit that I have saved for him. Mm -hmm. And just like that continued to give me that ability to like stand firm when it was hard and then have those people check in on me. Like, Hey, how how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, how is your purity Mm -hmm. beyond, you know, like relationally, what are you looking at? What are you listening Mm -hmm. to? You know, Mm -hmm. what are you watching? And and just having that accountability to not only check in on me, but also to confess to, Um, if I did, you know, take it a step further or didn't stand firm, like I wanted to, to be able to confess and have them pray over me. James 5, 16 says, you know, like when we confess and pray for each other, that's where we experience healing. That's where freedom comes in. And so being able to have those, those people in our lives that we can confess to and that can pray over us is really, really important in that pursuit of purity. Absolutely. Thank you for all of that. That's awesome. Sky. Oh, we got Josh. My yeah. bad. Josh, yeah, go ahead. He was like, he was like I've about been to have so my much. bad. I've been learning so much. I just want to slide in there before, uh, before I hand it back to Scott. Um, yeah, right. I'm learning. Um, well, yeah, I just wanted to know sort of your take on what believers can do in their everyday life just mm-hmm. to spread the gospel. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's, it's an easy thing to totally. really overlook. So. Absolutely. I always like to say, you know, ministry is wherever your feet are. So it doesn't mm-hmm. look like, oh, I have, you know, this degree in this, or I have, you know, I'm a pastor at a church, or I've graduated from Bible college, or I have my, you know, theology. It's just like, no, wherever you are, we are called. My life verse is Acts 20, 24. And it says, for I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's why we're here, you know, to tell people about the good news of God's grace. That's all of our mission and purpose in this life. And so being able to take that wherever we are, whether it's we're a barista, whether it's we're going to an airport, whether it's, you know, we're at a church, whether it's, 
you know, having just conversations and talking with people, like just being able to, you know, just ask good questions and be joyful and be peaceful. And, you know, even just the way we live, I think is just so powerful. Um, mm -hmm. Just being able to, we should look different. Like how we live should confuse people and it should raise question marks. Like, oh, there's right. something different about you. You know, you have a peace, you have a joy, you have a confidence about you. And I want to know where that comes from. Um, and then just getting to know people, asking them questions, um, encouragement, encouragement goes so far. You know, I always try to like find people. I, I literally pray. I'm like, Lord, show me who to encourage today. Like give me an opportunity to encourage someone today. And I think just even those little prayers, um, but just knowing truly like your ministry, ministry is wherever your feet are. So wherever you go, like you have the opportunity to bring, you know, God's grace and that hope to mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. Just going off of what you were saying about wanting to live differently. I think it's super difficult in our culture today of living in a world where everyone is so easily influenced. Mm -hmm. um, and so what would you kind of give uh, as an encouragement and advice for someone who's wanting to live countercultural and mm -hmm. someone who's wanting to um, live differently and look different to others is what yeah. kind of advice would you give them? Yeah. Gosh, I mean, I think what has really helped me is just like I, when I read in scripture, it talks about over and over and over again, like, blessed are those who are persecuted, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, blessed are those who suffer for my name. You know, blessed are those who are insulted because of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we are guaranteed. And, and even, even when Jesus is talking to his disciples, right? Like, what, what does he say? Like, his invitation is not the most inviting thing in the whole world. It's like, hey, pick up your cross <laughs> yeah. and right. follow me, right. you know, yeah, die, die to, to yourself. yourself. Like, yes. amen. And like, that's what yeah. he's saying. And it's like, hey, that's not the most like warm, friendly hug. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. oh, pick up my cross, you yeah. know, die to myself. Mm -hmm. And so it's just even having an understanding that to be a Christian is literally to say, hey, it's no longer I who live, mm. yeah. but mm. Christ who lives within me. Yeah, so it's, it's saying it's not Maddie. It's the spirit of God inside of Maddie. And so I'm not looking to how can I gratify Maddie? How can I please Maddie? How can I make people like Maddie? How can I, you know, fit in so that they think this about Maddie? It's how can I honor God? Like, yeah. how can I, how can I be, how can I get closer to God today? Yeah. You know, and really asking ourselves those questions, like truly filtering it through, does this decision honor God? Does this push me mm -hmm. closer to God? Does this make me look like Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. and, and just asking ourselves those questions is so important, but having that right understanding that being a Christian does not mean we're we're called to live this comfortable, easy life. That's like it's true. it's the opposite of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's very much true. the opposite of that. That's but true. great yeah. is our reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's knowing that this isn't our home. Like we're not living to be, let's kick our feet up and just like chill and have a great like, <laughs> no, we're here on mission, on purpose, knowing that we are headed to something far greater than mm -hmm. our minds and eyes could ever understand here on this earth. And just wow. keeping that perspective that like. Heaven is our home. And while I'm here, my goal, my mission is to reach as many people as I can for the sake of Christ. And so, I, I mean, personally, that has been the biggest thing that has helped me yeah. on days where it's been really hard and I've received a lot of persecution or hate or criticism or it was hot, like it was just uncomfortable. Mm. It's just remembering like, of course it's gonna be. Like heaven's, yeah. heaven's my home. Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Maddie, can, can we all agree we love her? Yes, yes. 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 I love y'all. Yes. Yes. I know, Best seriously. Literally. Literally. Maddie, thank you so much for being here with us, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for just participating. Your questions were awesome. Again, Maddie, we love you. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing for this generation and the ones to come to. So thank God you, guys. You, you yeah. guys are world changers. Yeah. Yeah. Love you I want to let everyone at home, if you're watching at home and you want more, just follow Maddie at Maddie Prue on Instagram. You can also find her book, The Love Everybody Wants, wherever books are sold. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.